Hello, everyone. Welcome to, uh, to the Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting January 3rd, 2024. Um, we have the only person at the moment from the public is Kent. Hi, Kent. I don't know if you want to uh, make a, any commentary of any kind. No, not today. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Thank you. We, I put you in the spotlight many times, so I would. No problem. We appreciate it. Um, did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? Does anyone? I uh, Rich Parish. I just. Yeah, I I was not present at the last. Okay. So. It doesn't mean you can't you can't vote to accept them though. That's apparently. Nope. A, a rule that I, a new rule that I didn't know about. So you can. Understood. Okay. Um, so, there are two small typos that I noticed um, in the section under tree notes, email from Kent Johnson. The second bullet point just says Ken instead of Kent. And in the last section, um, let's see. Oh, it's it's so it's so minor, but in the second line it should say they are looking to do an online professional blah 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 instead of on online. Any other? Um, I um, in the in the fall planting wrap up in spring twenty twenty four update. Um, the third bullet says uh. Who said they talked about better organizing the work that needs to be done? Suggestions were establishing a coordinator, a liaison. It was a project, special project coordinator. And a maintenance, tree maintenance coordinator, not and a maintenance plan. Because that went with um flow chart thing that we went over which i got just recently got digitized and i'll show i'll get it for you guys before the next meeting does that make sense can you repeat how you would like it to read so so it says uh suggestions were sue said they talked about the better organizing the work that needs to be done yeah justin's suggestion were establishing a special projects or special planting projects coordinator okay. between the commission and Trina Campton and a boy summer maintenance coordinator, I would call that. Plan coordinator or just coordinator? I would just call it summer maintenance tree coordinator. Uh, sorry, summer maintenance coordinator. Okay. Yeah. Done. And Jordan's just going to call in because they can't. They said that the the city agenda, uh, the city website, he couldn't get in either. Hmm. The, the city website doesn't really. Well, that's what he said. Uh, you know, it it doesn't surprise me. The city website, unfortunately, sometimes um, can be kind of clunky and hard to navigate, especially if you're on a mobile device. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be on a desktop. Um, so, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's why why like I sent out the the email link. Um, sorry, we're going off track, but that's why I sent out the email link when I do the Zoom meeting through uh, Gmail, so at least everyone that's on our email thread has a live link and can get to it one way or another. But that email goes out like two days before the agenda gets put together and it, I'm sure it gets buried. So, but anyways, um, did you anybody? email him the invitation that worked fine for me? Yeah, I did. I, everyone, okay. everyone that comes to the meetings gets an email. Uh, everyone that's a member of the commission and Bonnie and Kent and anyone else that asked me to be on the email chain um okay any other corrections okay um could i someone please make a motion if so inclined to accept the minutes as amended
Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll second it. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, no discussion. Okay, Bonnie, could you please do a roll call? Okay, Rich Parasoletti? Uh, yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Absent. No. Richard uh, Parrish? Yes. And Jordan? Not here yet. Okay. Yeah, he's on his way. He's trying to, still trying to get in. Thank you. Okay. So, Chair report a uh, tree warden report um just a couple of things so i i have just an update about the turkey hill road tree removals i have uh, not really been able to get up there i did drive up there to take a look at the amount of trees they're talking about um but i i need to actually now that the holiday schedule is sort of over with i have more time after mass tree wardens next week. And I'm going to go up there and actually look at everything and determine what, um, what actually really needs to have a public shade tree hearing, but there are quite a few trees. Some of them are in poor condition. So some of them won't make the hearing list, but, um, that, and so we'll just go, uh, we'll just have to wait to probably our next meeting. I can give you a better update. Um, I'm working on the tree city USA, uh, our tree city USA application. Um, we have, I think probably taken down about 90 trees this year, which is like 30, almost 30 more than we took down last year. Um, a lot of that has to do with storm damage. So I had to go back in our, so the way that our contracts operate, obviously there's, we have three contracts. We have an emergency tree contract, we, which is for all emergency work. We have a tree removal contract. And then we have the trimming contract. So uh, at times we've had to do removals under the emergency contract. And those are, um, not, they're not tracked the same way because I, the way that I give the work to the contractor, um, it's, it's it's locations as they're called in a dispatch and the contractor goes and deals with them. And then if I go back and follow up and if there has to be a removal done, then the trimming, the removal contract takes place. The last couple of events we've had, um, or many of a couple of events we had this year, we had to do removals right during the storm because the trees were in, either they were private trees that have fallen in the public right away, or they were public shade trees that had um, such large tear out wounds that um, I didn't feel safe leaving the tree up. So I had these two different notes that I've kept. And so I'm trying to just put those together. And so far I've come up with a firm 82, 82 trees um, that we remove between both contracts, but I believe there's about eight more um, in, in the notes, so 90 altogether. Mm. And we, yeah, and we didn't actually, um, we have a few more that, I mean, we have, I, I literally could probably have them work every week to do, you know, five removals a week easily just because of the, the, the mortality. Of, a lot of the Norway maples are struggling um, and, uh, a lot of the big sugar maples are struggling, but we're trying to preserve them as long as possible. Um, but it's just been, you know, uh, red maples are struggling on the sides of the road where there's no curbs because of the salt damage. So it's just a lot, unfortunately, a lot of, uh, a lot of tree mortality and also the droughts that we've had and the overabundance of rain, you know, those are all going to just come out, um, as we move forward in time you're going to see the effects of all that uh, environmental uh, and, and uh, weather related issues or climate related issues, I should say. So I, yes, Jen. Um, Excuse me. Uh, Jordan said he thinks he's in the waiting room. Are you, can you see that? No. Oh, okay. No. It's processing. I don't know. Okay. Let's no, go I to the moon and back. Sorry about that. I go haven't, ahead. I haven't, I mean, he could call, did Jordan try to call in? I think that that's what he's trying to do. Okay. Yeah, the call in just it will show up eventually, but it, there's only the seven participants that are here, which is all of us. Okay. So um so once I have that list, Jen, I can actually get that stump location list to you 
And then you and I can go over that. And there's a bunch of stumps, like there's 16 trees that we took down on the top of Warner street. Um, but they're, they were red, red pines and, um, they were uh, loaded with diplodia and red pine scale. So we had to take them down, but you know, it's on an embankment. I don't necessarily think it's the best place to plant. So those kinds of things, we'll just have to run through our, we'll have to filter that stuff out. Uh, the other thing is, is that, uh, I did send you, um, and we can talk about this at the end of the meeting. I did send you the seedling brochure today. So that is in your inbox. So uh, I we can talk about that later on, but it would be nice if we could get our order in early just because um, the seedling brochure looks like it's full of seedlings, but the quantity of some of the more desirable um, native trees is kind of uh, slim. Mm. Like there's only a thousand of this, a thousand of that. You know, some of the, like the white oaks, there's 3,000 other trees. I have 2,500, but some of the... Uh, um smaller trees that i thought we that would be great underwire uh natives are hard to come by because there's just so many of them you know being requested all over the country um so that you have that um and then next week is um the mass tree wards and foresters annual conference so that is uh tuesday and wednesday uh we have an at, at the cutoff today with the attendants we have about 392 people attending so we anticipate 400 plus 10 percent more so we might be around 440 um and that that is that is a sold out conference we got 35 uh yeah, 30, yeah 35 exhibitors um we have i think four or five nurseries that are going to be there this year we we were able to get uh chestnut ridge which we buy our bare root stock is coming which would be kind of cool because they do a lot of work in the commonwealth and schichtels is going to have a booth so it'll be interesting we're going to have the two families right next to each other that have two different operations so um i don't know if any of you are interested in coming to any of that but i will send out i'll send you another uh registration again you can register under my name um but unfortunately i don't don't have the bandwidth to pay for the registration so you do get a discount if you register under the city of northampton so oh, if you go ahead, I wanted to come. I probably can't come. The second day is like real technical stuff. But I looked at that okay. more like, uh, you know, hazard assessment, stuff yep. like that. It's kind of not. But if I I would just your name down. as Yes. So what you would do is I if you want to if you want to go, I will actually sign you up under my name and then we can figure out um, the billing afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Yep. OK. Yeah, I definitely want to go. Okay. Not Tuesday. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. I'll I'll get back to you tomorrow. Um, and that's really, really, really about really about it. I'm sorry that I didn't send out a call for agenda items. I did sort of a short one, but I had forgotten that the holiday was on Monday, so I needed to have the agenda posted by the Friday be Friday be the Friday last. So. But I think I, I did remember the most important thing was put the setback tree planting program on the list. So I do I do remember that, Molly. So I do get a brownie for that, I think. You do. You do. All right. All right thank you. Uh, anybody, anyone have any questions? Okay. Uh, I, I'd like to yield a couple of minutes um, out of my time just to Rich Parrish, if you wouldn't mind. Rich, could you just give us a quick update on um, the pruning, how that's going? Yes. Yeah, we we st started pruning in uh, in December, and uh, we've generally uh, had a, our volunteer crew out once per week, and, uh, and then a, f a subset of that crew has gone out on uh, some other days. But uh, we're with the large crew. We're trying to hit areas of trees where there's a lot of trees in one area that kind of makes the uh, the crews work more efficient. And then on other days, we're trying to hit some of the older trees that have not been pruned yet or for a long time. So uh, trying to optimize our time. And to date, we've got almost 200 trees that we have uh, pruned on 
in the city. So we're off to a pretty good start. And uh, there's still a couple few months left to go. So I think we you know, we will have a, a pretty good impact this year. And in general, we've had up to maybe nine volunteers in our crews, uh, most of whom have some experience in prior years. So uh, I think we're making some good headway this year. Thank it's you. very that's, impressive. That's That's excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, all right. So I left the uh, spring and um, spring 2024 planting plan update on there. I don't think we have anything unless I don't know if Sue or Jen had met since or, or had talked about anything since our last meeting. I have not talked to either one of you about that. So I'm. Um, we probably, haven't. I've okay. been. Um, should we be contacting the Rotary Club? Um. Yeah, I think that I actually I think that would be a good idea. And the other thing too is that Sue, did I send you the email, or did I loop you in with the Ice Pond Drive folks? Yeah. Yeah, I I have I owe Archie the resident who's kind of taking the lead there an email um about the tree removal process and planting process. So when I send him an email, which I will do tomorrow, I'll see, see you in it. So that way, and, and Jen as well, that way you can see sort of what's going on. So I thought that would be, um, that would be a good place to have a spring project where we did a bare root planting. Mm -hmm. um, and the same, um, Ar Armory Street's a little different, but Armory Street, there's four locations there to plant now and the trees have been removed and there's, the stumps are gone. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, unfortunately, they're tree pits, but mm -hmm. we need to we need to replace them because I we're going to need to take there's a whole row of ashes there, mm -hmm. similar to ice pond that will have to be removed uh, going into the parking lot, um, the Army Street parking lot as well on the right and the left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I don't I don't have any updates. I think Jen, um, once I formulate this list of the then. Maybe we could have a conversation about backing into a number of trees that we want from the nursery and we can go tag some stuff. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I kind of need like it's going to be a little different run a little differently than when Rob did it because he had this whole pile of sites already yep. generated. You know what I mean? We're not really in that position. And so I was kind of um, once you and I talk and then. Sue was going to meet with some folks that were going to help her streamline the tree tracker. Okay. Or, and I, we have a few leftovers and I do have a little handful of list of sites that are like ready to go um, that, you know, will need to be dig saved or, you know, what if there's other, you know, a handful of stuff that I can add to that list or blanks we didn't have that we on the old list. So Anyway, we as soon as you and I meet, we can kind of put our heads together. Okay. I think we could do a pretty good estimate of at least like ballpark, you know, types of trees and numbers of, you know, small, medium, larges. And, you know, yep. I think I think we can do it. Between. So. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just my apologies. I'm just emailing Jordan a new link to the meeting. And. Let me just see if, uh, just hold on one second. Sorry, I can't chew gum and text at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, Oh, Jordan's in. Oh, well, oh, well. Oh. Somebody let Jordan in. Somebody did. Who was it? Bonnie or Sue? Thank you. Ah. Jordan, welcome. Um. So then, um. 
So yeah, I think I think Sue would lip reaching out, knowing the fact that we're probably going to have obviously the same type of Arbor Day or Arbor Day Earth Day celebration period. Definitely be nice to see if the Rotary Club could help out okay. with the plantings there. The other thing I was thinking too was potentially doing the same kind of mass planting up on um, Ridgeview Terrace, uh, sorry, Ridgeview Road, which is up off of Route 66. They also have the same type of tree species that are on ice pond, ashes, red maples, and oaks. Streets were kind of built at the same time. So that would be another location where we could do, you know, we if we have, an, it seems we have a plethora of volunteers. So that might be a good place too. It's just a matter of me coordinating and getting, and I, I originally was going to pull the stumps out, but I think we just need to actually leave this, grind the stumps down and plant next to them. But the trees really need to be removed first. I think that was too much trouble uh, trying to do succession planning. Um, and then we probably ought to go to Village Hill and evaluate um, the ash trees that are on uh, Ford, is that Ford, Ford Crossing or Mo, Moser? Uh, Moser. I think it's Moser. Yeah. We need to evaluate those as well because I have a feeling we're going to end up doing the same thing. We might take down a certain amount, replace them the same year, go back the next year if the trees are, um, you know, really poor condition, take four more out, replace them. So we're not leaving people with absolutely nothing. Um, so, and then it would be great to see. Um, your uh, the matrix that you have for um, the, the flow chart for the organization. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah, I just had looked really good. I just briefly looked at it today. I was kind of behind in my email. So I'll send it to you and then um, you can just uh, did it for us. Okay. So it looks really good. And yeah, so awesome. I can, uh, I'll get it to you. Okay. Anyone else have any comments? about the spring planting not about this but thank you i finally got it together so yeah i'm sorry i don't know i <laughs> I, I think i let i may have accidentally left a digit off when i transferred the zoom link from the original email to the actual agenda but i have to double check because this is not the first time um that's happened so my apologies all good i'm happy to be here thank you yeah, great to great to have you. Are are you gonna uh, be able, are you gonna be at the Mass Tree Wardens Conference next week? I'm thinking of it. I may or may not have a scheduling conflict. If I go, it'll be just the one day of the ninth. Okay. All right. Yeah, it looks really good. The agenda looks awesome. Okay. I'm I will send the agenda around after uh, we're done with our meeting so you all can take a look at it. And Jordan, if uh are you are you are a member now, so you get the member discount if that's the case. So but you I I Jen is not a member, so Jen's going to register under my name and then nice. we'll receive the discount the same way. Okay. Heck yeah. All right. Um, okay. So our next agenda item was the setback tree planting program. And would someone like to do a screen share of the brochure? Molly, would you be able to do that? Let me just make you co-host real quick. Uh, if that's where you'd like to start, I'm, you know, it's up to you all. All right. So that's the existing brochure that we have um, that was in process to be turned into a door hanger, which um, we were not able to um, finish. Mm -hmm. um, one thing about it, it says Northampton Public Safety Commission, but now we're the Urban Forestry Commission. Yep. We should probably change that. Yep. Yeah, there was this... a couple of edits. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm happy to take commentary on any of this. I'm kind of glad we didn't actually make this into a door hanger because then we would have been stuck with a whole bunch of door hangers. There's there's two ways to go about this. We could we could make um seen it done two ways. National Grid has a 
like a, a door hanger that's just a pocket that says national grid on the outside of it and inside the pocket is a trifold document hmm. they use them if they want to um you know they want to remove a tree that's on private property or they want to trim a tree that's on private property that's interfering with the utility um or the other way we can do this is just make this into one of those door hangers that we've seen and used for like the volcano mulch, but that's only two-sided. So there's a lot of information on here. And I think, uh, it, I, I think the information is really good. I don't think we should take any, you know, I think we should update everything, but not necessarily take things off to make it fit two sides. So I, I personally would be inclined to see if we could do the door hanger pocket and then yeah. make it trifold. I think that's a better idea because then we could reuse the the door hanger pocket for something else. Like if we had some pest that came in yep. or some other, we could, you know, just, yeah. Yep. So and Rich. It, yes, sir. It, is it the intention to just put these, say, on the doors of homes that have a very suitable front yard or is it a blanket type uh, distribution um that's actually a really good question i mean i think initially we, we would want to target places where um there is a good location that has nice you know good soil volume but doesn't really necessarily have any street trees yeah, yeah. um but we could also you know we could also do the blanket we could rent an airplane and we could just run <laughs> over the and throw them right out the window no I'm just kidding um yeah, I mean, I think I think we could do it both ways. I th I think it depends what our I guess it depends what our goal is really. I mean, our you know what is our what is our what is our goal here? Um, I like the idea of finding some streets where there are a number of different, um, with like where they really don't have a sidewalk, but they have a lot of yards and no trees, and then putting them centering, you know put them on those doors in that little area and that'll get people talking too, I think. M Molly. Um, well, I did that quarter mile survey of planting sites and we can use that data to, you know, it, one of the columns says, is it in the right of way or is it a setback? So we can pull out all the ones that are setbacks and look at those addresses and, um, um, I think we should target those places. Mm. We could do other places in addition, but we could start with that, or at least that could be part of who we're targeting. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. And I wonder if we could go to the places that uh, based upon our data over the last six or seven years, places where, you know, we've obviously planted in certain wards, there's their dis our distribution levels are different, they vary. So maybe we could look at the distribution of the existing trees we planted against um, the quarter mile survey to see if there are certain wards we could target more heavily that have good setback planting locations and also have a deficiency of trees over the last seven years. Mm. You know, that's we could do that, too. Um one thing I just, uh, David uh, sent me an email earlier today um, and he was making a suggestion. He says, my only edit to the setback brochure would be adding a checkbox um, for native shrubs with an asterisk that says, if you're interested, call the tree warden for more details. So if we wanted to, um, you know, if we are going to offer, um, you know, native woody plant material, in the form of understory plant material uh, or shrub material, then as a setback, we, we can't setbacks are trees and shrubs. That's what the MGL says, uh, MGL 87. So we could put a checkbox on the bottom. I think if Molly, if you had that back up, there's a bunch of checkboxes on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could just look at that quickly, please. Yeah. So and there could be um, a checkbox under red bud between red, you know, and other. 
Although, although I actually think that this list, I think we also need to look at this list because the rotunda loba sweet gums have been really difficult to transplant in over winter. Um, we haven't planted any green spire lindens in quite some time. Um, the silver linden, I'm a little concerned because of that aphid that we had over the summer. Um, not that I don't want to plant any other lindens, but th that that aphid is um, is, is probably going to end us giving maybe may give us trouble. Um, I'm also wondering if we should think um, about offering two different elms instead of just a Princeton elm. Maybe um, I don't know if New Harmony. Jordan, have you planted any New Harmonies with any? luck or have followed their no, success? No, right. but I've planted Valley Forge. Okay. So Va Valley Forge and um, Accolade is another good one that, that I mm -hmm. think is not that the, the only, we've had two that I can recall, two Princeton Elms that we've planted that actually have gotten DED. One died and one is still hanging on. They're in the same location over at, on North Street. So I'm just cognizant of the fact that we've planted a lot of Princeton elms. So it'd be nice to give people um, maybe a choice. And then... Um, so we say like American elm cultivar and then leave it up to us in terms of availability and the latest and greatest and what we feel is yep. most resistant. Yep. Then you don't need a reprint. That's smart. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yes. But no. we're, well, we're going to do a reprint anyway, because where it says urban forest, it has to say urban forestry commission instead of... Yeah, I meant like in the future, you know. Oh, like we don't, you know, you wouldn't. Have to... I was also thinking, um, I don't know if a checklist is the best way to do it because a checklist is like something that you would check off and then submit to someone, and it's not like they're sending it in, and it's not like they can, you know, necessarily get the tree that they check off because it depends on availability and site suitability. Um, but maybe we could just list the trees. And then also that would give you more room because you might be able to do two columns. So, so, so list of uh, available species. Yes. So I wonder. So I wonder if we would take it a, a little step further and and like, I think Rob and I had this conversation about because every a lot of times when Rob would go and maybe you've had experiences the ones that I've talked about setback plantings people necessarily kind of balk at a large tree in their yard. You know, they want a medium tree or they want a small tree. Mm. Um, but I also think it is helpful to have trees listed by size to give people a choice. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So you could you could do large, medium, yeah, small slash underwire, and then you could have another column for um the native plant material. So you could have like four different potentially four different rec four different recommended trees and then i would envision that what we would do is we would basically have this trifold folded up in the envelope and then we would also uh fold up the eight and a half by 11 agreement and put that in there as well mm. and then you know some kind of instructions how to fill it out uh yeah jen the only um I'm just thinking visually, um, I, I get what Molly's saying. I'd have to see what the end result was, but the only thing is um, it's like really set apart. You know, it's like, here's the ones to look at. It like visually, it's very delineated, really clear. Um, I think you have to be careful about giving people too many choices. Um, so I kind of like the check boxes because it's like, oh, let me look at the, and they'd have it at their house and they'd be like, oh, what one did I want? You know, and they, you know, but I under, also understand what Molly's saying too. So I would have to see what it looks like, but from a, a visual, like, where's the trees I'm supposed to pick from? Like super clear, you know, there's no wandering around the, the brochure. Like to us, it's like, of course, those are the trees you pick from, you know, <laughs> but yeah. It's from a graphic design thing. I think it's pretty well done. But but if there were there was changes and somebody that knows how to do graphic design, I'm sure could handle that, you know, make it 
look good, you know? I'll when, add when, that when, we, we actually plant a number of others, at least I can think of a couple of other species that just aren't on this list. So it's kind of a sampling list with a chance for the people to feel like they have a, a say or a input. I think that that's one of the reasons it's set up like this so that people could check off some of the ones that they like and then write in some others. And then at the bottom, it says availability varies. We could yeah, take off following the ones up. and put in shrubs. Sorry. No, yeah, totally. I'm um, following up on what you're saying. Um, the, the notion of availability, um, you know, can change. If if we wanted to keep it within this same sort of amount of space that it's currently taking up, um, one way might be to instead of having like a separate thing for native, maybe just having like n in parentheses and explaining n denotes native. Um, it might save us a little bit of space and. Um, do, so have people ever come back and said, well, I checked off, you know, Hawthorne and I really wanted crab apple, that kind of a thing? Or is it sort of understood, you know, that these are the groupings, shade tree, sort of mid-range and underwire? Um, because I, I agree, sort of getting too granular and making it seem like they're getting exact, exactly what they want is a setup for, for all of us. Um, may not have it, they might have, whatever, they might come in from the nursery, not good quality, et cetera. Yep. Yeah, we had that we had that experience on um Scanlon Avenue. It was like a three or four year experience of getting nursery stock to actually get established that and it was painful. But I mean Rob stuck Rob and I stuck with it. <laughs> we, it trees are there, they're growing, you know, but I, I I agree with that as as well. I but I think it's definitely good visually to have tree species available so people can actually look them up. So at least they can consider it. And then if they have further questions, they can reach out to reach out to myself or maybe someone designated who's, you know, going to be, um, you know, working on this program as well. And Jordan, just for your information, I, I don't, I think this is the question you asked. If not, you could just stop me. But you like, to me, this would be like the beginning stage. They send in the information, say, yes, I want a setback. I'm using, willing to host a setback. And then usually it's an individual who goes out there and it's like this negotiating process right. Like right. to try to get him to get it real. You know, it's like a lot of back and forth and, oh, good, look at this or what, it, you know, it's a lot of touches, a lot. There's a lot of. Got you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's helpful. That's helpful. Yeah. And that's also something I'd be happy to um, support. Oh, oh, that's great. Cool. I can, uh, Christina um, said that she would kind of coordinate it, but we need people. Oh. You would be super valuable. So yeah, um, yeah, because that would you be know fantastic. Yeah, it yeah. So maybe we could talk about um, like how this would actually get implemented. You know, like um, we have to decide how we're going to decide which houses are going to get them how we're going to actually do the distribute, distributing of the flyers and then what the follow-up steps are when they contact us, like what exactly is going to happen? Um, you know, who's going to go there and what are they going to, what do they need to determine? You know, um, you know, what are the steps? That's the flow chart. Yes. Hmm. Who likes making flowcharts? Do you, Sue? Oh, no. Um, Jen already made us a flowchart. Oh. I mean, oh, not Jen. Jess made the flowchart and emailed it to Jen. And she'll have it oh. next meeting. About setbacks? Well, so, so sorry, I didn't get it together <laughs> to do this before the meeting. No, I'll, it's I'll, January I'll 3rd. get it out there. But anyway, so the way kind of it's, the way the vision is now to proceed is we have kind of the on this flow chart coordinators like Rich Parrish is the pruning coordinator. So he meets with Rich and, you know, and then there's a bunch of volunteers that he contacts. So one of the jobs, like the, the subset, we divided Rob up into many pieces because none of us can be Rob Postal and Alicia. <laughs> so, um, one of the jobs was setback coordinator. 
So all the information, Christina, um, I'm totally blanking on her last, Peterson, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Volunteered to be that person. Oh, that's great. To be the coordinator. So that's who the, all the information would funnel into. And then they would have a team of people in the best world of our worlds to go out and make these contacts with people and make a list. And then they would contact me who is the overall like planting coordinator. And I would make sure that they got the trees and are up like they were on the list for the nursery and when could we really get them and, you know, put them in a group to get the volunteers to plant them. And the other big thing is, um, you know, sometimes we can't promise people, oh, you're going to get the tree this fall, you know? Well, we, that's a sticky place because we, you know, there's a 62 different moving parts that mm -hmm. our best intentions, we just, sometimes it rains every Wednesday and Saturday and we can't plant on Tuesdays and Thursdays because we don't have people, you know, or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, we have these trees and maybe they dried out or, you know, that's not usual, but anything can happen, you know? Or we, we had them at the nursery, we tagged them in the winter, and then they didn't make it at the nursery. So we, we don't have them, you know? So um, that's just something that, that the team needs to know. Maybe we'll do a little training or something, you know, just about some points. But that's the that's the idea. Is that right, Sue? Did I get that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're oh. explaining it. I'm wondering, may, maybe um, Molly, um, were you away for the meeting when we really... Oh. We, reviewed, we reviewed we had a follow-up meeting for the fall planting looked at how things worked and then jen made this physical chart of you know where are where we need more help and we I identified some, I find up some people to take on certain areas mm -hmm. we need we still need people to take on a few other things and um and kent kent's had his hand up Yep. Yeah, a couple of comments. Um, first, just I also thought the check boxes were kind of weird. That to me, it implies that I'm supposed to like cut this out and mail it in or something, and that the back side would have an address or I don't know. I thought it was weird. Um, one correction on the under the um, what should be called the Urban Forestry Commission. It also says that meetings are every Wednesday at a certain physical location, oh. and. At least as long as I've been coming to meetings, they've been on Zoom. So maybe you should correct that. Um, and then as far as where to plant, I think the suggestion of looking at the quarter mile from city center um, survey is great, but also um, a couple of other priority areas. When I did that report a while ago, um, you had some low income neighborhoods that were marked out that have not had any trees planted in them and also the neighborhoods with sparse tree cover, especially uh, looking at the map in between the area between uh, Burt's Pit Road and Ryan Road, all those subdivisions were, most of those subdivisions were called out as areas that would, that have sparse tree cover. So that might be a, a good place to um, do some door hanging. Great suggestions. Does um, thank you, Kent. I, just a question for the commission: Do you have a time frame when you'd like to have this thing rolled out by? I I think we work better if I mean I'm speaking for myself. I know I work better when I have a deadline. So, because uh, the the graphic uh the graphic design of this was done by Alicia, so it's her like intellectual property. So I would have to either ask her to help us with it, or I would have to ask her to um, basically what I would do is I would take a PDF, but I just get a permission and I would send it down to like Marcus Printing. They do graphic design work. They make business cards. They did a bunch of our door hangers in the past. So I would just have them design it the way that we want it with the corrections. So, but that will take a little bit of work. What about Arbor Day? Is that too ambitious? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, it depends. I mean, I 
it would be nice to have a couple of us sort of like working on it just to, you know, so we have a set of multiple sets of eyes and then maybe we could just come back and get the approval of the rest of the commission. Are you talking about the deadline for having the revision of the brochure done or for putting up yeah. the, distributing the brochure? I, I think, I think the role, you know, the having it done and rolling it out. Okay. So actually identifying places to, put them and actually um, hanging them on the doors, getting the bags and all that. Yeah, I I think um, it would be kind of cool to have the uh, press release for Arbor Day talk about setback plan things. Mm. So we could actually, you know, we'd have that media push from the mayor's office, which reaches a whole bunch of different folks. Um, and then we could be like, you know, at Arbor Day uh, tree giveaway, we have door hangers and we'd have that door hanger. And then we could also, between now and then, identify those places in the in the, uh, the quarter mile that we want to target, all the while working on just adjusting the door hanger itself. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, Jen. I think that the you could, I think Arbor Day would be a great idea because you could, you know, have them at Arbor Day to hand out. And then if we had just a, we wouldn't have to have all the sites identified, but if we had like a course chunk of sites, we could get a group of volunteers on Arbor Day to go out and door hang, you know, mm -hmm. that would be a whole thing. You know, that would be a whole other I love that idea. Aspect. Mm. Mm -hmm. There one little issue that I would see in door hanging is that a lot of houses, at least in my area, you know, they're they're rent houses, multifamily rental houses, and the owner is not present. So any door hanger is probably just going to get pitched mm. and not and not get to the intended owner audience. So uh, might we include perhaps a maybe another piece of paper in the door hanger saying, you know, if the owner's not present here, please pass this on to them or some such note to try to get to the right audience. Mm, good point. If they have a packet, would that mean we'd be asking them to give input and then we'd go back and pick them all up? Mm -mm. Um, well, I, I on the door hanger, I think my, the email at the email address uh for the setback planting brochure is there so if people are keenly interested they can actually just request the tree and fill out the form and then they can we can either pick the form up or we can um have them mail it to the dpw office like they sort of do now and that takes the um that that, that takes the doubling back and having someone go and you know and of course there's always the dialogue that may happen be, uh, i want a tree but i'm not really sure which one i i, I want a medium tree I, but i like the small trees um will any of these native uh understory uh, uh plant material work you know under this medium tree you know so there's always that it's never really cut and dry i, I don't think <laughs> no uh, i think the form the form should just say something like you know contact us for more information, you know, if you might be interested. Yep. Um, it, it, do we have um, a volunteer or volunteers willing to go over the form to make the corrections? Jordan, yes. Okay. And then, and in the end, so, uh, sorry, Jen, you were saying you something? You mean to look at, uh, um, to to look at the at the brochure to give you corrections. Yes. Yes. Oh, I can look at that. I can look at that too. Okay. I mean, All right. yeah, it's already, yeah. And then what I'll do is uh, I'll reach out to Alicia and ask her if she's okay with me using the intellectual property, and then basically just getting a sign off from her. If she's not, you know, she's not gonna be able to do it, which. She might be able to do it, but I don't know. I don't want to pressure her either, right? She's got a lot of stuff going on and she's sort of um, out of state. So, um, and then I can share it with uh, Marcus Printing and then we can go from there. So 
So I think it's really would be good because I think we are, you know, it'd be nice to capture more setback plantings and people are requesting them. I got a few requests the other day or uh, no, not the other day, last month. Um, we had a tree, a tree fell over, wasn't even cleaned up. And a lady actually emailed me and said, can I have a tree right away, please? Can you plant it like tomorrow? I'm like, uh, <laughs> like seven inches of rain when I, all the trees are putting the, uh, they're they're taking a nap till the spring so um we should like so we'll have the people i'll go through in the next couple weeks hopefully i'll go through that quarter mile planting data and pull out the setback trees and try to um i'm going to try to figure out if there's a way to link my excel spreadsheet to the shapefile, the GIS shapefile, so that when you click on a, a, a dot, um, it'll give you the information about that dot. But I, I'm i going to need some help with that because they're separate and I have the Excel file with the data and then the points. But I'll work on that. Um, when we do the, um, so we'll do the, the hangers at these targeted places, but we should also do some kind of- well, I, I can probably help with that. I don't know exactly oh, yeah? what you need, but shape files and data files are my. Oh, mine. you know how to do um, ArcGIS? No, but I use QGIS. I, I know how to do the things that ArcGIS does. Hmm. Okay. And other tools. All right. Great. We could meet and figure that out. Yeah. Let me know what you need. Okay. But the other thing I was going to say is that we need um, an outreach to just like anyone, if you want a setback tree, you know, how are we gonna do outreach for those people? You we could have the press release on Arbor Day. Sorry, Rich. Yeah, but right. maybe. Or you could print the, the much of the text of that brochure into the uh, Daily Hampshire Gazette. You know, is whether it's an article or just a some little public, you know, public uh, notice, that would get attention. Also, um, may, I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with just, you know, starting out. Maybe, but I'm a little worried about getting inundated with, wow. uh setback requests and then we really can't produce and people yeah. you know it's reflection mm -hmm. on the city very, very and, possible you know, people think it's the city it's not a volunteer group you know so you know i maybe i mean my instinct would be to start by doing your quarter mile thing having them at arbor day do a little you know outreach and then see where we're at so we don't you know because we're still like this last fall, we were really catching up. I mean, we had setbacks that were like three years old, you know, that mm. we were, people thought we forgot about them. And, you know, it wasn't terrible, but, you know, I just, I'd rather instead of open up this big thing, you know, mm. roll it out and do a quality, you know, be able to meet people fairly soon, you know, from the request. You're here. I yeah, agree, I think, Jen. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I, I also think from our experience, like on Middle Street, that's just one example that it sort of grows organically. So, you know, we were, Rob was just walking around there one day and just talking to a neighbor and the neighbor's like, another neighbor come, what do you know? We're going to plant some trees. Well, I'd like a tree here. And then Meg um, sort of took it upon herself and she said, well, you know what? I'm going to talk to the whole neighborhood for you so you don't have to do it. So I think, um, you know, I think more information, um, the more information and the more outreach we can do is great. I like Rich's um, thought about the Daily Hampshire Gazette. The only thing that I would say about that is that um, the amount of money it costs to actually print something in the Gazette is astronomical. What I think we should do is we could even ask the mayor's office to roll out the setback planting brochure an immediate blast prior to Arbor Day and just reinforce it on Arbor Day if we're ready to go. I don't Another see tactic we've used is um, 
did we maybe had an electronic version of this at some point and we sent it to the ward counselors? Yes. Ward reps? Yep. As long and as we asked them to share it with their yeah. newsletters. Yep. We could do that again. Yep. I mean, I think there's multiple ways of doing it with the existing electronic platforms that are available to us. So. Yeah. But I think it's just a matter of reviewing it, making sure that the tree species on there, you know, reviewing it, correcting the language, making sure that the flow of the form sort of matches the flow of how we want this to go. And then um, looking at the tree species that are on there and determining whether we want the check boxes, no check boxes, different columns, you know, we have a, we have some time, you know, I, I would say that I, would it be too much pressure to make like a deadline of like our second meeting in March or first meeting in March? Okay. Deadline for um, having the brochure basically done. Okay. So ready to go back timing that it would need to be like in the next weeks, we need to submit to you any changes. Did you already take notes on those or? Were some people meeting on that? I think uh, Jordan and Jen were going to re review it. And then Molly, you were going to work with Kent to try to double down and see if you can get your spreadsheet and um, the uh, shape files to communicate so we can sort of optimize the quarter mile. And the other thing too is that I think... Uh, we go to the, Jen, if we go to the nursery, I think once I can get a list from John Kinchla of what he's got available. Yeah. So that would be helpful for us to look at um, because that would be, we can do uh bare root setbacks, but I found in the past that sometimes it's setbacks are come very quickly. And by the time someone decides on one, the planting um, window for a uh, bare root is sort of come and gone. So we have to go to the, nursery or we have to have something in a grow bag in stock in the nursery ourselves so let me work on um a list from john yeah, i think that's that's good because also like uh i think the bare roots work better if we have a kind of a central location and a lot of the setbacks are like we got one here got one here got one you know the tree sitting out in a plastic bag in the sun and you know like, I don't know that it's, like, the best growing format to use for setbacks. Just in my experience of when we've done them before. Even when we have a lot of them together, if it's sunny, it's not it's not the best situation. You're trying to put wet towels over them and keep them shaded. And um, meanwhile, try to keep everything else rolling. And it can be a bit crazy. But certainly for setbacks, if they're spread out, that's that's really hard. Thanks, Rich, for putting this front and center. No, I mean, I think we've been meaning to do this for a while. We just seems to get other things come up. We get busy. We've been in a little bit of a transition, but I think this is important. Um, you know, I also would like I also would like to figure out a way to reach homeowners too of the new homes that have been built like all through Bay State that um by you know multiple different uh contractors that have they've planted things in their front yard that I would not recommend to plant. Mm -hmm. So that would be another way, another place to sort but that's sort of like looking at things a little differently than the quarter, the quarter mile survey, but it's just something to think about to try to yeah. where trees may have been lost. If we can offer the new resident a free tree, we're going to take care of it. We have, you know, here's our list. Are you Are interested in, you know, doing this and so on and so forth. Another place to look at. Um, the Bay State Village have like a homeowners association or community organizer, they, you know what I mean? They used to have a listserv. 
I, I don't know if they have like uh, individuals have a list serve like uh, that Jackie Balance would know about. Mm -hmm. uh, I do like the the board counselor's newsletter. Alex Jarrett's newsletter is spot on. It goes out once a month. Um, so that would be a great if the mayor, um, you know, if the mayor's OK with us blasting that out, I would be grateful for Councilor Jarrett to uh, and then, you know, we have a new host of counselors, too. So we you know, we're going to be working with different people that are maybe not, not familiar with uh, what we do. But um, I think they'd be more than happy to support what support. I know Councilor Jarrett's big supporter of what we're doing. So. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So I'm going to put our March. March deadline is roughly for the second um second meeting of the month. Okay. April twenty second is Earth Day, so that's when we'll be in in really moving. Okay. All right. Any other? Do you think that um with this schedule that we're doing, are we thinking that we would? like the final actual planting of these setback trees could happen in 2024 or would it take like not till the next year probably i mean i think it depends you know if we first of all if we make the contact with folks that want the trees it falls within the time frame of the planting either the spring or fall plantings and if we have the tree stock i mean it's it's plausible that we could go through that setback list that we have of requests. And if we could find, you know, the right, it's, it's a matter of actually emailing the people back, communicating with them, telling them what's available, potentially set up a site meeting. You know, this is prior to having the, the setback agreement, the setback agreement is, I mean, sorry, the setback brochure is just going to help us along, but I, I don't, I don't see why we couldn't. I don't know, Jen, do you think it would be too much of a lift? Yeah, like I would say, you know, if you have if you have uh, setbacks in the pipeline right now, you know, we could get those to Christina and say, hey, can you start acting on these? And then, um, you know, we could plant those in the spring if, you know, if we had the plant material at ones that maybe they got at Earth Day or over the let's say that they decide in I mean, um, Arbor Day and Earth Day, let's say they get all jazzed about it. Um, maybe it's June by the time everything gets settled or July. We could definitely have a list that we would plant in the fall. I mean, we don't we don't have as many sites on streets now that we can go and do a whole street because we've done those already. You know, we're the ones we did on really the right away were mostly replacements this past fall. So, you know, depending on what they want and when they contact, like if somebody contacts us September 1 or September, you know, October 1, we might have to wait till by the time, because we have to dig safe it. It takes a month by the time you get it, get the stake in the ground and can like, it goes through the channels and then, dig safe comes out so i think we i think you know we depending on how if we get you know 300 requests no we can't do them all <laughs> <laughs> but but you know if we get 100 we probably could you know depending where they are too you know but yeah yeah it's definitely doable it's just i think we have to come up with a process that works for all of us that and then we have to we also have to make sure that we respond to the residents you know the worst thing is to have someone request something and then we never get back to them i i have a i have a um i have to go back in my records but i have a, a setback agreement that i never received from a resident and i have to backtrack on that so i have to look at that list so i'll be in touch with probably uh sue or jen with that setback master list we have access to so better make a note of that too oh good so yeah i mean sometimes the homeowners too they just get busy and just ghost us and then you know we give their tree to somebody else and then they re-emerge and they have to wait till the next season yep 
Okay. Anyone else have any thoughts about the setback? And and then Jordan, as far as the part on the setback where we're going to talk about the potentially the native, the you know the shrub, the sh native shrubs or native uh, understory plant material, are you you and David are just going to sort of like coalesce that? Is it was that something that you and David had talked to? Not necessarily about the setback, but at least deciding what species would be available potentially or if we could you know what sure you would... i guess i wasn't sure based upon the sort of feedback in this group two meetings ago if that was still something that folks felt was important um sort of consensus driven so i guess i would um ask for affirmation on that and then exactly if you know if folks still value that like what form should it take i mean it seems like what you have going in that brochure is pretty comprehensive i mean the only other thing that might be of value would be just adding the shrub component is that am i reading that right by if i recall we you know we talked about the trees and shrubs and had different there are some differences of opinion but we kind of came to consensus on the idea that it could be like something we have in our back pocket um, and Jen pointed out that we kind of did that. We've done that in certain sites like Cooley Dickinson Hospital, where we're, we're trying to create a grove or, a, you know, a little area and that that's when that would come out. And I guess it would be good to know ahead of time, like if we had some guidelines for what species really make sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much work that is, though, um, for something that's kind of contingent on it coming up something we wouldn't necessarily like promote and make our new focus but in addition to the shade trees we would have that again i think rich said in our back pocket like oh this is a good spot we've got some space um we could put some understory in here to incorporate that idea so anybody else remember yeah that's a good i think that's I think you also, they, you know, it has to be clear. It still has to be within the setback 20 feet thing. You know, we can't like, you know, be planting stuff all over the place because that's not the, yeah. you know, that's not our program, you know, gateways, yeah. screening the gateways is a little different. But... What's the and public that, good? That brings up another issue, which is, um, you know, when you go to do the site visit, you have to know for that particular street what the setback, like how wide the street is and where the setback line actually is. So that's another whole set, you know, a, a, another whole step um, that I guess Rich is going to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, Before we I pivot can... away from this, if we could maybe just if we could get some kind of consensus on if, if folks feel that has value and perhaps as you, I'm going to try to paraphrase to the best of my ability, but like not something we're going to promote or ask necessarily highlight even in the brochure, but if if the situation arises where a shrubs are an appropriate, um, you know, way to approach a given site, uh, that we just have a list. And so, I mean, that's something I can certainly do. And so, um, a list of native shrubs, um, natives is that if that is that right? Um, uh, and Rich, I think I am I went to do explore um, the existing list. Um, there was a list um, attached to the tree inventory, but I think there's another list that was, I couldn't find it the second time I went looking. Um, it was like an older list and I can sort of build off that. Um, and I'll just, whatever, make up a list, email, what's the, the sort of the appropriate approach? Um, just email it to y'all. Planting guidelines booklet, do you know that? Document. I think it might it might have been in there. That's that's our main recommended list. And in yes. there, was there a list of shrubs? No, <laughs> no, but but I but I don't see why, and I actually don't see why we couldn't actually. That's a project that Jen and I and I think Rob are supposed to work on, but we haven't. We still got to do it. Uh, but I think it would be good actually to have, like, a single page in that book dedicated to recommended, you know, uh, woody, woody shrub material that we want to see planted in the city, because one of the things I'm finding is that a lot of, um, and this is, uh, I don't want to get off topic, but 
a lot of the site plans that are presented uh, to the planning board for these different uh, special permit type projects, um, there is a lot of um, plant material that is there that, that's there that I would not necessarily recommend planting um, because it'll never be taken care of. It's overplanted, et cetera. So we don't even offer a pallet. So, you know, in the ordinance, we tell people they have to use the tree list and planting guidelines for the planting um, ordinance, uh, significant tree ordinance, but we don't identify any, um, you know, understory uh, woody plant shrubs. So I think that actually be a place to start. And then we could actually use that little box on the bottom where it says other when we do the site visit. And we're like, okay, we see that this would be a great place to do, um, a, you know, have a, a, a overstory and an understory and then have some woody plant material. Check the other box. And here's the plant material that we know that's available. It's native that we like you to plant. Okay. Um, I can put that together, Jen. I'll just run it by you, uh, you know, when I, after I, I draft it. And um, my sense is that there are some shrubs that are not, you know, we want to get too deep in the weeds around, you know, what we mean by native, right? So um, I'll throw in some stuff in there that may not fit everyone's sort of criteria or native or may not even in fact be native to North America, but there's absolutely nothing that's going to get out of control that is not invasive, um, et cetera. So I can do that. Yep. Got it. Thank you, Jordan. Of course. Jordan, just for your information, the when we talked about native trees originally making that plant list, we... We basically said anything from uh, our heart in its own uh, all the way to basically the middle of Georgia and all the way as far west as the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So that you can sort of, if those parameters help you, great. You know, you can go outside the box too as well. I, I You know, anything anything new is is good. So cool. No, I, mean, I no, like Quince, no. you know. Yeah. Quince is yes. not native, but you know, yeah. cool yeah. fruit. Yeah. Not weedy. No, makes great jam. So you know it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh all right. That's pretty awesome. too. That's, yes. Fiery red, yes. Um, and it's not euonymous. Um, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Which is still planted. I mean, some of these projects I go and you want I'm like I said Really? Yes. Oh. Yes. Literally, it's everywhere. It's not illegal in Massachusetts to plant it. Not that I'm aware of. Not huh. I don't think I don't think it's made that it is on a list, but I don't know if that list has been adopted by uh Mass DOT. I, I they're working huh. on it. So the calorie pair was on that list as well, uh, to be considered an invasive. Um so anyways, yeah, so that's all another that's all another meeting, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think some of that development like use these old lists and they often like you know, the varieties aren't right either. They'll yep. have like the straight species that's going to grow really big and it's not appropriate. And yeah. Or they have the list and they send it, you know, to their nursery contacts and it's, they put it on a truck tomorrow. It's cheap. Let's do it. Let's close the book and move on to the next thing. So, you know, I understand that perspective, but that's not the way we can continue to move forward in, in our business. Thank you. Um, any other business unanticipated by the chair? Does anyone have anything, Molly? Well, in the um, the minutes from the last meeting, it yes. said something at the very end about um, the round table, um, the Mass Tree Warden and Foresters oh. yes. looking to do online professional development, blah, blah, blah. Yes. We will put this on the agenda for the next meeting in case it is something we would like to do. Yes, and I didn't I didn't put it on there because I needed some clarification from uh, Dave Lefcourt. He's the tree warden in Cambridge. He's the education chair um, for Mass Tree Warden. So I talked to him yesterday, uh, and so we are what we are looking to do is we are um, looking to try to pair a um, a nonprofit tree advocacy group with a municipal tree board or municipal tree warden and actually have maybe four communities. So there'd be two people per community 
uh, few, four communities, and they would actually do a roundtable Zoom uh, PDS, where it would be um, it would be they would have a moderator um, develop a set of questions. And then basically we would let, you know, we want to hear from every, the, the four communities, um, the stories of the communities, how they, how they came to be in their tree initiative or their, or their planting program or whatever it may be. Um, the success and failures too of the, the communication between um, the tree advocacy board and the, and the particular municipality um, sort of having like shared experiences. So that, that got clarified because I, I originally thought it was just having like the nonprofit or the tree advocacy group talking about their experience with the city and not having a city representative there. So it's kind mm -hmm. of actually both. So, um, you know, our, our community, we're very fortunate. Our community is very strong. Um, in, and, uh, one of the leaders in the Commonwealth now of this advocacy tree advocacy group and working in conjunction with the volunteer commission and the, you know, the tree warden and the, the you know, myself and the, the mayor's office. So I'm still, um, I, I'm keeping us in our back pocket uh, in case uh, I don't find uh, another, uh, I'm, I'm looking for the other advocacy groups that actually probably are at um, maybe halfway of where we have this, like four years ago to sort of, but I'm, that's still, a possibility that we could participate. I would like to have two people, one person from the commission who is not affiliated with Tree Northampton and a person who is affiliated with Tree Northampton to actually participate. Uh, there is a, um, I don't think any one of you were with me, but we had a meeting at Spring Grove Cemetery with uh, Rick Harper and his NRC 310 class one spring many moons ago. Lily was the chair. And um A.J. Elton, who um, actually did uh, his dissertation on um, tree advocacy groups and working with municipalities, he actually is going to be the moderator for this. Um, I don't know if you remember him. He I remember have... him. He came to one of our meetings, right? He did, yes. Yeah, in your office. Yep. So A.J. AJ is going to be um, A.J. is going to be the moderator and he's going to basically talk about his the published work about the tree advocacy groups and their um, interactions with the individual communities. And then we're going to open it up to questions to each advocacy group. I think this is how it's going to work. And then organically um, people participating in the audience can actually send their questions in through chat. So it's going to be done in June. Um, it's a good time to do, we did a PDS in Cambridge in June in person, which unfortunately, which was attended um, could have been a, um attended by more folks but it's a hard time to do it in person because there's people are starting to go on vacation people's schedules so we decided to put this zoom component at that time frame in june so and i will get you the exact date when the flyer comes out i should have that in a um by next uh monday so that's kind of like the framework now that i have a little clarity on it so so if anyone's um, interested in participating, it'd be more um, than- Can we, um, we don't have many minutes left, but yeah. could we quick look at the flyer for what to order? Cause you said some of them are gonna run out really fast. Yes, can- um, Let's see, do I have it. I'll, I'll do a screen share for that. Excellent. So the the white dogwood, there's a thousand of them. Um, I think if I have my yeah right here, I can tell you. Does that mean that the white flowering dogwood? Yes. Yeah, it just wouldn't. It wouldn't fit. Oh. I couldn't fit it all in there. <laughs> so. Okay, so the ones that have the limited supply are the tulip poplar, um, the white flowering dogwood, 
and the, those are really the only two. There are a thousand each in reserve. Everything else either has two thousand, twenty five hundred, or three thousand, mm. with the exception of the pre bag ones. But we've never bought the pre bagged ones in the past. So, are we choosing four or five? Five of them. Five um, times? I think we did six hundred last year. That's right, six. Then. Yeah. And I'm okay if you want to do more than that. If you feel we can move I, them over two days. Um, I steer away from the lilac. Okay. Because I think that there's more benefits to the red bud. Yep. I'd include uh, winterberry holly because there's yeah, just so one. much of it growing everywhere. There's going to be good pollination, you know. Yeah, that's a good wildlife food too. Mm -hmm, right. Okay. Holly. Yep. So that's how big is that? That's a small, right? Yeah. So if you look at the uh, where it says size, that's the they range in, you know, oh, the yeah. Holly, yeah, the holly would range from ten to twenty inches. That's kind of big. That's a four old. So that's that's a four year old plant. Um, I mean, I'm full grown though. We usually choose like a couple bigs, couple mediums, yeah. couple smalls. Yeah. Because every and then we always run out of the smalls really fast because everybody yeah. wants the smalls, but we want to try to get people to plant the bigs. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's definitely any suggestions? a shrub. There's definitely a shrub. The holly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so ones that were thinking. Of, um, well, how about redbud? Yep. Okay. So I got a hundred redbud, hundred winterberry. I think red oak is good. red oak. Yep. Red oak. Okay. And should we include tulip poplar? I'm I'm fine with that. We That's should it. pick at least one uh, evergreen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which one? Well, spruces are under a little pressure right now, aren't they? Yeah, the white spruce seems to be the one that's doing the best out of all the spruces. Oh. Um, but I I I was able to get con color furs, which I we weren't able to get in the past. So that's actually a really I actually like the con color. And I also like I but I also like Douglas fur Lincoln. I just I like those are great and they grow oh. so fast. Oh so, I'm a dumb fan of Douglas fur more like you know, a, a kind of a sleepy but um I say that again. Color. I can't hear you. Yeah, um, we're having trouble hearing you. Oh, well, there you go. I'm sorry. I was gonna say I'm a fan of uh, the con color, um, Douglas fir. Um, I'm a fan of Doug fir, and I'm also a fan of Avi's con color. So I think you know, those would be awesome. Doug fir is not like Douglas fir is only a, a native species in these parts, but it's certainly North American native. Huh. Hmm. We've done Douglas for a number of times. We've never done con collar. So that's, I'm just doing devil's advocate. Like, let's do it. We haven't offered that before. Um, anybody have any thoughts on a shag bark? I love it. Yeah, shag barks are great. Were those like, are those being custom grown for this group? That's certainly something that's uh, hard to get your hands on. No, they're not being custom grown. It was what was on the um, what was on their website. Yeah. So I started this process back in August because this they are they'll they're sold out now of all the things that oh. these things are not available anymore. Um, that's our six. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, great. I mean, so we have uh, red bud, we have winterberry, and then we have. Red oak, tulip poplar, con color, shag bark. Yeah, that want, sounds good. Do we want to do another one, or do you think that's enough? It's a nice selection. You got some understory, you got some wildlife value, you got some screening. Um, and so do you usually have, oh, sorry, Jordan. No, I just think it's a nice variety. Um, Go ahead, Sue, sorry. So, so do you usually have some left or is like 600 what we can really usually get rid of? Because um, you don't want... The winterberry holly and the red buds will 
fly off the shelf. And then the others will go much more slowly. I mean, if you get another small one, everybody will want it. And we, we could also, we could do like 200 holly winterberry if you wanted. You know, mm -hmm. so that, that would give us 700. And then we actually have... Um, that would be three hundred of uh, three hundred of the smaller plant material, mm -hmm. and basically three hundred of um, the large overstory deciduous trees, and then a hundred of the fir. So that would, I would give. Say us instead of doubling the winterberry, if we're going to do more, I'd suggest we do try to get people to plant trees like go with the dogwood, for instance, and then you're going to get people planting something that's going to keep them cool. Hawthorne is I don't a know. really a nice, um, you know, small, small tree with really good wildlife value. Um, you, you ornamental, wanna... nice spring color. I'm a fan of the Hawthorne as well. Oh, the Hawthorne, maybe. That okay. sounds good. All right. Okay. So 100 red bud, uh, 100 of the uh, uh, holly winterberry, 100 of the red oak, 100 tulip poplar, 100 con color. 100 shagbark and 100 of the Washington hawthorn. Do the hawthorns have thorns? They do, which is a, a, a value to a wildlife. Um, folks planting them might have other ideas, but you know we can't pretty everything up. This is nature. It's hard. It's <laughs> harsh attributes. <laughs> I like your thinking. Okay. All right, I will put this together, and we thank thank you, uh, Molly, for sharing all that. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll I'll put our order together, and then um, we'll just uh, at a future meeting put it on the agenda to talk about Arbor Day and their activities, et cetera. Once we've flushed a few other things out, so Good. I have one last quick question: Did sure. the spotted lanternfly letters ever go out? No, I oh, have no. my bad. I cannot oh. get the thing to open in a word program. So I need to reach out to does uh, anybody have word on their computer? I do. You do? Molly, can you help yeah. me with the last finishing touch? Yeah, what has to well, okay, email me about it. Okay. There oh. was just a few like inconsistencies. All right, I'll email you. Thank you. Okay. And uh, my apologies. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I don't have anything else, so I will have a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll, make I'll move to adjourn. All right. Um, I will second. second. All right. All in favor? Thanks, Thank Bonnie. You.